In this lecture, we'll talk about directory structure. The goals, uh, I want to ta talk a little bit about what a directory is um, and how they can be structured. So we'll talk about single level, two level, tree, and graph structures. So what's a directory? So usually when you're talking in you know, Linux, Unix, you kind of um, associate a folder with a directory, which is pretty much the case. Um, but really how you should think of it is more of a symbol table that translates file names to their file control blocks. So if you think of it this way, um, then you can start defining a set structure for it. Um, so really, so in this folder or a directory, um, this is just keeping, this directory will keep track of these file names and their um, file control blocks. So all of their metadata, so file control block which is all their metadata. And we'll also keep track of, of how they're actually being stored, so where they are on the computer um, and what structure. So when we start to talk about directory structure, some things that we need to consider is that we need to be able to search for file, create files, delete files, list a directory, name a file, um, re sorry, rename a file, traverse a file, um, And to do some of these, so for instance, creating and removing a file, this may change the position of the file in the directory. So we need to have some way of reordering um, files in the directory or filling in gaps. Um, deleting a file, again, this may cause another gap in um, the directory. I'm sorry, so these won't cause gaps, but they may change positions of files, so things may need to be reordered. In this one, it may cause actual gaps. So if you delete a file, then there's a gap in the structure, and so then we need to defragment, um, and then traversing a file, so a file system, rather. So we may need to search for all files and all, search all files and all directories for a certain file. So um, this can cause um, issues too. So some of these implementations are going to be easily, more easily searchable than others. Um, so in general, though, it is a good idea to have a backup of the structure saved somewhere because if this ever gets corrupted, then um, you're no longer going to be able to search for things. You're not going to have um, anything set of where it actually is. So the first way that we can look at directory structure is to structure it as a single level directory. So this, there's just one directory. Um, the drawback of this is obvious thing is that all the files um, must be unique names, right? So this is a directory. These are all the files. They all need to have unique names. And so this is not really practical, especially when you have multiple users. So then you can move forward to a two-level directory, and so now there is a master directory and then user directories. So each one of the user is going to be able to define its own um, uh, folders within uh, its user file directory. Um, so now we can think of paths. Now there's um, we can do path. We can locations of files can be associated with paths. So for instance, the path to this file would be uh, user one slash a. Um, and so just to kind of, the whole concept of paths kind of come up. So um, brief side note, see this thing's, my own slide surprised me. So Unix and Linux commands are actually um, treated as files. So what happens if, for instance, you are in this um, subdirectory here, so you're in this directory, and you call ls. If there is a file, so here I put that this is an executable that's actually called ls, now, for those of you not familiar with ls, ls is a very common command in Linux that lets you list the um, the contents of a directory. So if I call ls here and there's an executable called ls, so it's my local copy, which is fine, I can have another file named ls, it's going to execute that file. If not, 
then um, what is secretly set up is in this master directory there's another user, user zero, um, and this is connected to the system call library. So if you um, if it doesn't find this executable, so say this doesn't exist, then it's going to go up to this user zero and it's going to find the system call library and we're just going to find the real ls. So brief side note. Some drawbacks of two-level directory. So you have user isolation, which can be good and can be bad, uh, meaning that these users uh, cannot actually go into another user's directory. So as soon as they boot into the system, they're in this um, this subtree. So there's no, you can't CD, CD back up into here and go into somebody else's. So this functionality is not there. So it could be good, it could be bad. So it could be bad if you ever wanna share files with somebody. Um, so if I wanted to move one of my files into user two, I couldn't do that. Um, Organization is also, so your organization is a little bit better than the single level, but still um, you don't have this kind of like nested subfolder structure. You only have two levels. So enter a tree structure. So you can think of the two level um, directory structure as a two level tree. And so this is a, you know, N level tree. And when you have a tree structure like this, now you can think of a, a couple other key terms. Your current directory, which is the directory that you're currently in. So in Linux, you could say PWD, and that would tell you what directory that you're currently in. So say I am here, that would put me in slash root slash spell. slash mail slash prog and so this would be my current working directory and um, then you can also think about relative and absolute paths so the absolute path to this directory is here so this is the um, absolute path absolute path a relative path so say I want to um, see the relative path from this directory to my root. So a relative path would then be uh, dot dot slash dot dot slash dot dot slash root. I may have forgotten one, but that's the whole point is that so now a relative path would be um, from a, a location, where is it located relative to that position? So absolute always starts from the top, um, very top uh, directory, and um, a relative path does not, so it's based on where you are in their system. So first thing to think about is removal of a directory. Uh, so what does this require? So if, if it's empty, then you can just delete it. So if you have a directory and there's nothing in it, then you can just delete it. If not, you can go to one of two paths. You can go, you can say, okay, user, you need to empty that directory before I can actually delete it. But more commonly, um, you can, there's built-in functionality in like Linux and Unix and probably Windows, although I'm less familiar, that you can remove a directory recursively. So this remove-r um, will let you, even if the, the directory has stuff in it, it will let you recursively remove everything that's in it. This can be very dangerous, um, especially if you were to execute it in the top um, level, you could essentially delete everything. So, a little bit dangerous. Um, a benefit of this is there's no more user isolation, right? So if this, these are the users, I can um, cd dot dot out of, up into this top um, section and cd into other uh, sections of the computer. So I could hypothetically go into somebody else's um, uh, subdirectory and, and work in there. So um, 
if the two users want to share a file, that could work. So I could, from my directory, I could copy it into somebody else's directory, but that's not really sharing because now technically they're two different copies. So a way to um, circumvent that is to use um, an acyclic graph structure. So first off, acyclic means no cycles. So why no cycles? Um, if you had cycles, traversal would be a pain, right? So you would get these infinite loops. Deletion would also be um, impossible or very complicated if you had um, a cycle in your graph, so etc. So how this works is that you can have, so if you think of these as two different users, you could have um, the same file that's shared by two different users, right? So this is called a link. So how do you link these together? Um, option one is actually not to, to link them per se, it's to actually duplicate this file such that it has all of the same attributes. So it has, it's pointing to the same place in memory um, or in storage, same, same everything, same attributes, same everything. That kind of tricks the operating system such that when you open both of these files on each individual user, um, directory that it's kind of the same file. However, you do kind of run into issues with um, with the um, with data being out of date in one and the other. So it's not the best way. So data consistency is an issue. Option two, you can link the file. So most commonly um, a symbolic linkage is used where there will be a file here that it shows up and it'll be the same name of the file. It'll show up there. However, it will instead, it will be, instead of being a physical file sitting there, it will be symbolically linked to this position. So as soon as you open this file, you're actually opening this, even if you open it from this user's directory, you're actually opening this file. And this is done with the link dash s command in um, Linux. Um, now, some issues, again, so we have to worry about this. What happens if we delete that file? So if this user comes in and deletes the file, the file is gone, but usually the link remains. And so we make this up to the user actually to realize that that file is no longer there anymore, which they will. So you come in here and the user tries to open the file, that link is gonna be broken, and so there's gonna be no file there. So less common, but it kind of takes the user out of having to do the guessing game, is to use a hard link. So in this, um, whenever a file is deleted, then it's stored in, it, it's not actually deleted if there's another link to it. So as long as there's another link to it, it's stored somewhere else. Um, and until all of the links are gone, then it can be finally deleted. So that's just using ln instead of dash s. So at this point, I'd like to ask if you have any questions, please let me know. Um, again, these last few have been just kind of a brief overview. In the next three or four, we're going to go kind of more deep into um, how to do this kind of file system implementation. So thank you.